And so、um, high school came, and after my sophomore year,、um, my my our eldest sister decided to like、um, suggested to you know transfer us back to Dumaguete here in Dumaguete so that we can all live together the five of us siblings. And she wanted to you know also include my mom with us in her Dumaguete, but you know my mom couldn't just leave her job. She needed to continue with the job, of course. Because that's what moms do. <laughs> that's that's the reason why they're super moms. Anyway, and so I continued my high school here in Dumaguete. So I transferred here, and I spent my junior and senior year here in Dumaguete. Living here in Dumaguete, it was basically high school and church, because、um, I'm I was born in a. Christian family,、uh, born again Christian family, and fun fact again, my mom and my 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 mother and father met in a Bible school. Actually, they were, they were both pastors, and yeah, so that's that's where they met. And then we're actually ex pastors' kids. I am actually an ex pastors' kid. <laughs> yeah, and so when I when I continued my high school in here in Dumaguete, my life was basically high school and church. And so I really didn't have that exposure in the outside world. I didn't know about alcohol, drinking, going out, and stuff, partying and stuff, because it was just church and high school. And so during my senior year, I started、um, leading worship. I was in a、uh, I was in a worship team in our church. I was a youth leader in our church, and just you know, it was actually really really helpful in、uh, when it comes to my faith. But、um, that's another story. I'm going. I'm going to spend another episode about my my faith and spirituality. If you're interested, if you're not inter- interested, then I'm going to upload it anyway. <laughs> so yeah. So that's basically my high school moment. After I graduated high school, there was an opportunity in here in Dumaguete, Siliman University, one of the you know, one of the. Most famous universities here in the Magate. I had this scholarship, but then、um, you know, peer pressure. I basically just、um, I was young and stupid, and I wasted that scholarship. And then I didn't take some exams for my major. I was taking up、um, IT information technology, and I didn't take the the, the final exams for my major. And so the scholarship ended, and so that's when my life started to really like fall into pieces. And until now, I, I still don't have my degree, but I'm working. I'm I'm currently working for eleven years now in in a BPO company in, in a localization company. But back then, I didn't know where else to go after my scholarship. I after I wasted my scholarship, I was just. Asking myself, oh my gosh, what would I do now? And of course, my 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 siblings are trying were trying to help me, and、uh, some of my my some of the members of the church that I was in before I was then helped me and offered to like help me continue my、um, education in Siliman, but I would I would have to take a music course. So I took music education in Siliman, but only for two years because you know again,、um, I became inactive in our church, as I was like that was actually the agreement. I will continue to like serve and be in the ministry and be in the worship team and help out and help out the church with the ministry, the music ministry, and that's like actually kind of the arrangement. As far as I can remember, but then、um, I became very very busy with school. I I joined the band, I joined the choir, and and of course school and stuff. And I became inactive in our church. And of course,、um, I did some things that the, our church basically all of the all of the don'ts in our church. I did those things. <laughs> And that's again. That's another. More details about that. I'm gonna spend in another video. But I'm just gonna summarize my life and what happened with 
after you know my after quitting school and so I stopped again after two years with my music education um, course and an opportunity came that's why I'm I got accepted in this company that I'm working now and I got really really lucky because you know I, I guess I'm the only one who's who hasn't I'm, I'm guess, I guess I'm the only one left in the company that doesn't have a degree and very very thankful for that I'm gr very very grateful for that and that's why I really really treasure this um, job of mine the point of my story is you may come from a broken family but that should not stop you from reaching your goals that should not stop you from wanting things that you want to achieve and growing up I blamed my father for everything that ha that for everything bad happened in my life because you know um, I needed to have I needed to blame someone I needed to like you know have that I needed to let it out I needed to like um, blame him for everything and yeah when I started working that's the time I started drinking heavily every almost every day I I spent time I spent my money with parties and alcohol and you know stuff like that and just basically just trying to enjoy my life and just telling I remember always telling myself I deserve this I deserve this I deserve this I deserve to be happy I deserve to party I deserve to drink I deserve to be drunk and be happy with my friends and stuff but um, eventually I realized um, I wasted all of my money with that um, moment in my life um, instead of saving for my future and that's one of the realizations that I have right now although um, it helped me in a way those partying and stuff but if you come to think of it I should not be I shouldn't have to like I shouldn't have had to like spend that amount, amount of money for just you know be drunk and be hungover the next day and telling myself not to drink anymore and stuff like you know what I mean you know all of you can relate <laughs> but we thought that um for for 20 something years we really didn't have any news about my father about our father and then our grandfather died and then two years after my grandmother died um my father's parents and we really we really expected for him to show up during the funeral and stuff like that but she didn't show but he didn't he didn't show up during my grandfather's funeral but um good thing I think that was 2015 um, we received the news that our father is alive <laughs> and um, that's the twist of the story <laughs> because I remember I was in a bar like you know I used to like before sleeping I used to like um, go to this bar here in, in the baguette just have a, like a bottle or two just you know I can sleep afterwards but when I was scrolling Facebook and Messenger, all of a sudden, our eldest sister told us that sent us a message and sent us a screen sent us a screenshot of our father's of our father's um, Facebook profile. And when I first um, received that picture, I couldn't believe what I saw because the picture was really really different from what I remember. Because, you know, the last picture that I had my father is like, you know, he's healthy and stuff. But that picture, he was frail. He was like very, very thin. And, you know, you can really, really you can really see the, the changes physically. And so I didn't believe it at first. But then my sister confirmed that, yeah, that's him. And I can really... I, can still remember the funny thing I was supposed to stop drinking because I was supposed to go home after but when I saw that picture I immediately tell, told the, the waitress or the, somebody there can I have another beer because and I was crying and she was like are you okay sir and I, mean, I was like yeah I'm, I'm fine I'm just having a moment because I couldn't believe but it just just like random it was I, I was taken aback 
You know that moment when you're not thinking about that person, when all of a sudden you receive a uh, news about that person. You know, it, it would like blow your mind, and so that's what happened to me. And eventually, me and my two sisters decided to meet him. It's funny because um, before that, we used to joke around. My sisters and me, my siblings and me, we used to joke around. Like um, we used to imagine the moment when we used to talk about like what the feeling would be like on seeing Papa. Would would it be like a very dramatic hug and like like you know all those telenovelas and you know that 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 all those drama shows. TV shows like you have that big dramatic moment and hug and oh the crying moment, but um, we finally met with my long lost father. I I can remember not feeling anything at all. I mean I have this really really like empty and like blank feeling, you know because. That person standing before me is like a stranger to me. I was five years old. I was six years old, and we really didn't have that relationship. I, I, I do not know him at all. And so, it's just like the notion or the the fact that yeah, that's my father. But I, I was wondering why. I couldn't feel anything. I couldn't feel the longing that I had for so many years. I used to cry about him. I used to like. Like pray to God and God, um, when will I ever meet my father again? But when that moment, ha- when that moment happened, it was just blank. I couldn't feel anything. And yeah, it was just like meeting like a stranger. Like you know, you know, nice to meet you. Like we hug and then it was really really awkward in my part. And we eventually found out that. We have seven more siblings. It's from another woman that he left my mom with, and that woman was his secretary. That's also one of the reasons why he left my mom because, yeah, he was with this woman. He was with the secretary, and it, apparently they got productive and had had like seven kids. And so I thought I was the youngest, and apparently I'm not the youngest anymore. I have seven more younger siblings. And so, instead of five, we now have, we are now like 12. 12 children of Papa. (laughs) And that was really, really hard to accept at first. And not only that, we eventually learned about another sibling, um, the same age with my brother. And that's another story. Yeah. So basically, we are 13 all, all in all. I have 12 siblings. Total 13. Ain't that some sh- And so, yeah, life has so many surprises. And there are things that's out of your control. I remember a quote, tell God what your plans are and he would laugh or something like that. And so, just when I thought that um, I'm going to be fine, because I was in a, I was to the point of like forgetting about my father, because we really didn't have news about him. And so, you know, I came to a decision to like forget about him, because we didn't have news about him. We didn't, uh, we didn't know if he's still alive or whatever, but I was really, I was ready to move on. But then another chapter of my life started because of the fact that I have seven more siblings. And right now, my relationship with my father is kind of like, I don't know, we really, really, up until now, I still don't have that relationship, like a father-son relationship. Because, you know, we seldom talk or, you know, he, he reached out to us through Messenger. He will send us links, some random videos from Facebook. I don't know why he does that. I'm being like honest here. I still don't know if I want to like really establish a relationship with him. But at the same time, I know that life is too short to be like bitter. But I'm not bitter, but 
I'm still not there, you know, I, I st I'm still not, I already forgave him, but I'm still not, I don't know how to explain it to you guys, I'm pretty sure some of you can relate, um, you know, some of my friends will say, that's still your father, yeah, he is, but sometimes blood is just not thicker than water. So I guess what I'm saying is, I guess the lesson that I'm trying to share to you guys is like, don't hold some grudges, especially with your family, because all you have is your family. And, you know, like I said, I already forgave my father, but of course I'm, the goal is to like, you know, establish a relationship with him, but I'm really doing my best in doing that. That's, you know, that's what I'm trying to do. But, you know, I, I, I'm still praying about it. Um, you know, I can't do it on my own. But, um, you know, that's, that's what I wanted to tell you guys. Don't hold some grudges. Um, I know it's not easy, but just do some baby steps. Just do it. Um, because it's family. Family is very, very important and friends come and go, relationships, um, partners come and go, but family is constant. Yeah, we may have different situations when it comes to family, but at the end of the day, it's family. And so, yeah, that's, that's where I am right now. I don't have bitterness towards my father. But I am still trying to establish a relationship with him. And it's kind of really, really hard right now. Especially with my situation. I'm in a, you know, not midlife crisis, quarter life crisis. <laughs> and so I still have so many questions. And yeah, and life is too short to like keep that grudge. Because, you know, it would destroy your day if you hold on to that grudge, if you hold on to that bitterness, it would eventually destroy your life. Um, there are things that you wanted to do, but if you indulge too much with that grudge that you're feeling or, or that bitterness that you're feeling, that you won't, then you won't achieve anything. You won't be, re you won't be completely happy with your life. And it would eventually, you know, have a domino effect because that's the main thing that I that I'm still struggling right now. I still have trust issues because of what happened with my family, with my because of what happened with my father and my mother's relationship. That's the very I I realize that's the root of my trust issues, and that's um one of the things that I'm struggling with. That's one of the things that I'm trying to overcome to completely trust again. Not just with relationships, not just with dating relationships, but with every relationship that I have, even with friends and relatives and stuff. I really, really have that strong trust issues. But if that makes sense, I don't have bitterness, I don't have grudge with my father, but I still have trust issues, if that makes sense. If somebody can relate, please leave a comment. <laughs> and yeah. The reason why I'm doing this video because I want to share, I want to have that interactive, I want to communicate with you guys. What um, I want to like know your thoughts about my story, and I would like to hear from you because I, of course, I don't know everything, and <clears throat> I would like to like read your comments and advices about what to do, and you know, if you have similar stories, please go ahead and share it with me. Leave your comments below. Yeah, so I guess that's it for my story for today. And I hope you learned something. I hope you're entertained somehow. And like I said, you guys, please leave some comments. And I would really like to hear from you. And expect more stories from me about this because I, will, I really, really like to do this and add this content in my channel because you know this channel is kind of like my escape from the things that have been happening to me and I'm really not really into views and subscribers or monetizing of course I actually still I don't earn from these videos for now 
but I just I just enjoy uploading stuff and sharing to you my happiness, my story, and stuff like that. So I think that's it for this series, for this story series that I'm trying to do, you know. And so yeah, so I hope once again I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed this video. And yes, have a great day ahead. Have a have a nice day ahead. And life goes on, you guys. And if you're interested, stay tuned for more stories about me. And eventually, I'm gonna do more stories, not just about me, but if I finish telling my life story, then I guess I'm going to explore more stories about life, and I'm gonna share to you, and we will learn together, and yeah, yes. <laughs> So yes, thank you once again for watching my video. Thank you for spending your time. I know your time is precious, but I really appreciate you spending your time and watching my video if you if you're still here and listening to me. Thank you so much for finishing my video. And like I said, stay tuned for more life stories from Phil Andrew. Okay, so thank you guys and bye-bye. Love you all. Bye-bye.